Posnet. Uh, they have made it open source by Google. Write down the concrete case. I mean, if we yeah. do coding, that you grab some stuff from Posnet, uh, you grab uh, probably some events from Eclipse or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. and that's some ID. And uh, times of evaluation, or every time of evaluation or something. The definition is very, very huge, not even broad, it's just huge. So they have to narrow it down. Welcome back. Good morning everyone, uh, welcome to week 7, Namaskar, Namaste. So this week uh, we are going to talk about a typical PhD meeting, how the PhD meeting takes place at my university in the Welton Institute in Open University. And you are also going to see some advice given during the meeting specifically for me. Uh, how my promoter is going to advise and give some tips to uh, help me in my experimental progress and at the end of this uh, week uh, you will see a short tip uh, interview with one of our PhD colleagues uh, who is in her uh, final year of our PhD and that will help like the emerging or the budding PhDs who are going to join the PhD program uh, in the beginning uh, or maybe starting the PhD program. So this is called PoseNet. Uh, they have made it open source by Google and what they do is like uh, if you install it in your PC and uh, set up everything and all these things. So using that you can uh, now it is this is the client and it is streaming in a server so the server is streaming live json json that data uh, of this uh, i mean the positions of each person so it has like x and y value so from the left corner it is the origin and when you go below it increases and when you go right it increases and so this one is one pose so if there are different persons then it lists as pose one pose two pose three pose four something like that but okay. you don't need to uh, move from that screen uh, area otherwise the identifier will change i mean like if someone goes and comes back again then there will be problem that that identifier will change so that suppose there are a group of people they need to be present for the entire time so that in that scene so that it's how is the, where is the pose composition done? So can you like influence what it recognizes as a pose and how it puts, sets the triggers? Or where, where does that happen? How is that done? So now they have everything in a script. They have combined everything, which is in a Google API. So we can change it locally if we want, because this can work offline. So we can change it, like increase the number of persons. I asked the, the developer who was working in GitHub, I was in contact with him and uh, he said like you can change it locally, I was looking at the code and uh, increase the number of persons but for efficiency we have limited it now for to 20. Mm -hmm. The advantage is that in the Kinect you have only six people you can track and if you use multiple Kinects to track more people then again it becomes a problem like you need multiple PCs and the infrared beams interfere with each other and the other things you need to sort out but in this you can use also external web camera if you want you can use additional yeah, yeah, yeah. camera this this is using the webcam which you can use any cheap camera and the ai does everything in the backdrop and does it you, combine two cameras uh no so what happens then let's say if we have an overview yeah. camera and uh from both or three so sides. it depends like suppose we see collaborative programming suppose two people or three people are working then you can use their indi because it depends what kind of feedback you want to give suppose you want to give to that group then for that group you will use their laptop means you can build a exe file and share it with them like distribute the exe file and from that we can collect the data to a center or something or mm -hmm. so it depends at present if you use external gpu then you can make it one or if you use a mobile phone it also works with the mobile phone with 0.5 and just for my understanding, so the idea basically is now you would use PostNet uh, for to, to for to, only pose 
only only yeah, pose yeah. and you could combine that via the learning hub with for example an audio stream mm, yeah, yeah so something. that's why i was looking to combine and also i was in chat with him and he uh, maybe in this end of this month we'll have some examples how to consume this data stream which we get from the uh, pose net using unity so i don't know if we use multiple sources then maybe we use the learning hub which will be the middleware and okay. above it the unity will be getting all the data streams i mean like the integrated data because basically you, you from from the learning hub you could then send uh, commands to, yeah, to yeah, unity yeah, yeah, yeah. to update the unity environment yes yeah. yeah okay mm -hmm. and i think what, what you probably should do is really write down the concrete case i mean if we do yeah. coding that you grab some stuff from Postnet, mm -hmm. uh, you grab uh, probably some events from Eclipse or yeah, whatever yeah, you use. Cool. And that's some ID. Like. And uh, I'm just thinking a bit in how to constrain the problem. That's a bit the search path we had with BVAC also about if we could. I mean, there's this one paper I think we talked about where you have a group situation and you have on the on the table you have some tools like a scissor and and pens and blah like blah blah and yeah and and you, you the prop they solve a problem together like designing a prototype for design or something. yeah and you could also track the tools so which tools they grab and stuff and and uh, that of course would also be so if the the programming problem gives some advantages but also some drawbacks yeah, as, like a, as a physical movement is probably less re less relevant yeah, yeah. Uh, or restricted yeah, by yeah, the yeah. computers they have. Um, it is also de depends on how you do it. Like you leave them free or you define here that probably a good kind of scenario based approach would be would be a good one here. Like really to what we just had describe a scenario. Group of students starts to work together. The problem they need to solve is like to program. Uh, algorithm doing this and that and then you describe possible roles in the group and how your system could support and track track these roles yeah. and, and track the and support the group write a scenario of a one pager to become very precise on what what is the objective for for what you want to do so maybe i stick to plug the programming for now i think to to write that scenario at the beginning now is is, is good and you can still think of of different variations and what we, we would then use this scenario to talk to basically Claudia or Hans Tonino, that's uh, the coordinator of the, the also the spec. Exactly. And uh, we, we need to find a match with him where he says he has these, yeah, yeah, yeah. these kind of problems there. Are... I feel a bit observed with all these cameras. No, I... Welcome everyone to the interview series of week seven. So here I have Alexandra, who is my colleague, and he's, she's a final year PhD candidate here at the Welton Institute. Uh, so Alexandra is here to give some tips for the PhD candidates who are going to start their PhDs in the first year. So off to you, Alexandra. Some bit for having me and uh, I to all uh, the YouTubers over there. So Alexandra. Uh, here is my question that what advice do you want to give to the first year PhD candidates out there in maybe very shortly like one or two minutes? Ah, Sambi, that is a quite a tough question to handle in one or two minutes, but I'll try my best. So in uh, my opinion, the um, big uh, nightmare, the big problem that a PhD student has at the first year are two. Uh, the first one is uh, the problem definition and the second one is uh, the literature review that are a bit uh, related though. So at the first year of the PhD students, some PhD students are required to write a project proposal. Uh, this uh, PhD project proposal has to contain the problem definition, uh, the research question and uh, also the methodology. How will you address that research questions? And of course, to justify your um, problem, and that's a research question, you have to put a bit of a literature review in. How they aim to uh, operationalize, so investigate, investigate these um, research questions. And to do so, they have to make a plan, a project plan of uh, four years. That is uh, the duration of the PhD project. 
then they have to uh, write a literature review, a journal article related to it. And um, in both these cases, um, a PhD um, student at the first year that is not acquainted so much in uh, research, mainly go lost or tend to uh, go big. So the problem definition is very, very huge, not even broad, it's just huge. So they have to narrow down. And um, as well as for the, the research um, that you have to do in the literature review, you don't have to start big. You have also there to narrow it down. And how do you do that? So here are my tips. First of all, speak uh, with uh, your peers and uh, with your uh, supervisor. T try to have brainstorming sessions. So talk to people. Don't stay in, in your own thoughts. So let your mind and your thoughts be verbalized, talk to people, because they, the perspective change and it's good to talk with people. And this, they don't require you to know everything already at the first year. Uh, the uh, second, second tip that is more uh, um, practical, for the literature review, if you aim to do a systematic literature review, take a look uh, to Prisma website. And uh, another tip is uh, read a lot. I know it's uh, very obvious but it helps. You learn how people write and uh, how you have to manage to create your own article. It is always good. Then uh, try to stay focused, don't get lost. And uh, if you get lost, don't worry. Look at your proposal and find your way back. And um, don't give up so easily. It is not easy. A PhD study is not for everyone, but it is possible. And the last thing I can say to you that help for the brainstorming also to make your own thoughts more structured is find a community, a research community that is re relative or connected to your topic. So in my case, in some bit case, we are working in technology enhanced learning. So the community of reference for us is a, EATEL, the European Association for Technology and Answer Learning. And actually is uh, coming very soon the call for uh, uh, applying for uh, the JTEL summer school, that is uh, the summer school for uh, the people that work in uh, technology and answer learning. And uh, you can take a look to the website here below and uh, apply for it probably. To summarize, uh, I would say like uh, the main thing is like you should stay focused and build your network and try to join as many research communities and people out there and try to build your base. Give all the details of Alexandra below. So in case you want to contact her for similar research or any details, you can find her below in the description. <laughs> Thank you, Alexandra, for such an insightful advice uh, for all the PhDs. Uh, so see you guys in the next week in week eight with a fresh new experience. Until then, bye everyone. Please, please. Don't forget to subscribe and share.